Guys, what's going on? So in today's video, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be walking you through how to create a document similarity application that you can deploy in something like Flask, which is what I've done here. And what this basically does is it'll take two different document types. So you can either put in words or you can put in text uh, sentences or you can put in paragraphs or full-fledged documents if you want. And then what it'll do is actually compare the cosine similarity between the two. And what that does is the cosine similarity is a way of telling you how similar the two documents are. So for example, if I write something like, I have a test today, and then I wrote, I don't like to take a test or something like that. I would hit submit. And then it would actually tell me that the cosine similarity between I have a test today versus I like to take the test, I don't like to take a test is around 22% or so. All right, so now if I really wanna put this to the test, I'm actually gonna do a similarity score between two different articles uh, around the Maple Leafs versus the Colorado Avalanche. And I just happen to be at this game, so I wanna actually compare. So what I wanna do is I wanna take two different news articles, one off of CBC and then one off of ESPN. And it's both around that unfortunate game where Leafs lost three to one against the Colorado Avalanche. Um, but anyways, what I want to do is I actually want to take all of these different texts in here in this article and I want to put that under document one and then we're going to do the same thing here. And I want to see how close are these documents in terms of similarity score. Because this is hinged on the Leafs and it's also hinged on that same game, I'm expecting a score of at least 50 to 60%. So let's see how this works. So let's go ahead and do COVID document number one. So off of CBC Sports, I'm just going to try to ignore these pictures and just try to get as much text as I can. So we're going to scroll down. And so I may have to grab these into small little blocks. Now, one of the things that I have not accounted for in the code is I haven't taken out any special characters like punctuations or exclamation marks or anything like that. So that may deteriorate the score slightly. Um, if we get at least a score of 60 to 65 ish, then I'm going to say that if I were to take that stuff out, this is even going to be better. One thing I should also let you know is in the past, I've developed an application for myself, a web app, in which when I get news articles sent to me through my, through my reader, I put it through an algorithm like this because I hate reading articles that are very much duplicate or almost the same thing. It's honestly a waste of time. So I have an algorithm in there that basically will weed out anything that is duplicate. And my, you know, and, and for that, I set a certain threshold depending on uh, what topic I'm talking about. I have a slightly higher tolerance for certain areas while in others I don't. So anyway, so we've completed document one. Now we're going to do document two. So this looks like a much easier copy paste. So let's go ahead and copy and paste all of this. And let's compute this similarity score. So let's see what this looks like. And so now it's saying the cosine similarity between, so this is article one, it looks like article two is down here somewhere as well, is surprisingly actually high, 0.72. So that tells me that there's a 72% similarity score between the article that was written by CBC as well as ESPN. And like I said, if I did some more of that text analytics where I got rid of things like these exclamation points, this would probably be even a higher score. So I'm actually pretty pleased with that. So like I said, when you add more text to this, it's gonna be a lot more cleaner. And so another example would be, for example, I like the color blue. And here I can write, I like the color brown, but not blue. Similarity of this one is around 77% or so. And so likely the reason why this one has a slightly higher similarity is because there's an association with colors in this. So it knows that, you know, because we're talking about colors, we're going to give it a slightly higher association. And so what's really cool is you can do whatever you want with this um, in terms of deploying it to Flask. But let me walk you through the code. I'm going to show you how I did this. And then in the next video, I'm actually going to show you how to package all of this up and put it into a Docker image. But let's go over the code right now. All right. So basically for this, I like I said, I use Flask here. Um, then I've also used SK, SK Learn features, uh, the TDF ID of Vectorizer. And that's really used to take that sentence and to convert it into a vector. Then I use a cosine uh, pairwise similarity cosine function here. And then finally, I wanted to bring in stop words just to do some uh, pretext processing before I, I sent it to the algorithm. So very simply, um, what it does originally is it goes ahead and it renders the form. So when you, as soon as you go to um, for the 127001 uh, port 5000 forward slash, 
it takes you straight to the form, which essentially is this. So it'll take you to this blank form essentially. Then after you hit submit, because what it's going to do is in that form here, this is the this is the HTML for the form and it's basically a simple HTML document. But when you go to that forward slash, it's just going to render this area here. Um, and I'll show you why it doesn't render this just yet. But basically it's going to show you, hello, please input the two sentences. It gives you text area one and text area two, which is basically what you just saw. And so once it does that, it'll take the text area one value from the HTML file and the text area two, and I'm going to allocate that to text one and text two. Then I'm going to do some pre-processing against it, uh, basically lowercase everything, and then also remove any stop words out of that as well. And then I'm going to create my training corpus. Now remember, this isn't going to have the best accuracy just because I have two very, very small sentences in here. It does an okay job, but really when this is going to shine a little bit more, whether you use TFIDF or whether you use doc to vec or word to vec is really when you're going to have a large corpus of text. So it has a sample of many, many different words as vectors and many, many different documents as vectors. But for the two documents that we have, this is just serving as an example. So just keep that in the back of your mind when you look at the scores. And so all this is doing is it's taking the document one and document two. In this case, this is going to be what we've entered in each text box and it's creating one big corpus out of it. So it's basically creating a list of document one and then a list of document two. Um, and it's going to be the document that, it, that excludes all the stop words as well. So that's why it's process doc that we're using. Then we're going to initialize our vectorizer. And then here I'm basically saying, go ahead and take each one of these elements within the list uh, of corpus and go ahead and vectorize it. Once I vectorize it, I'm going to go ahead and compute the cosine similarity. And then I'm going to return back to the HTML, the form HTML. So we're going to go back to the original form that we were on. I'm going to go ahead and return the similarity matrix score, which is this. And I'm going to call that final. And I'm going to return text one as text one and text two as text two. And because this is Flask, um, I'm basically opening it up on 127.0.0.1 in port 5002 and I'm treating threaded equal to true. So now if I go back to the form.html document, the reason why you aren't seeing that stuff render before is I actually put in an if statement. I said if there is a value for final, which in this case, remember, is going to be a similarity matrix score. And this is not going to compute until I actually put something into the text boxes, which is why it's blank at first. So once it finally computes a similarity score, then it's going to go ahead and render the sentence, the cosine similarity between text one and text two is so and so final in this case. And I could have made this a lot more prettier. I just want to keep it bare bones to show you for now. Um, if there isn't anything rendered in final, then just return a blank form and then end the if statement. So again, a very, very simple little document. We'll throw one more example at it. Say I like shopping online and then here I'll say online shopping is cool something like that and now it says the cosine similarity of that is around 0 0.503 so like I said guys very quick little uh, thing use cases for this hey if you want to plug your resume on the top put in a job description on the bottom see what it comes back out as a similarity score I'm actually going to be doing a full-fledged video on scraping almost 500 to a thousand jobs i'm going to be comparing my resume to it but we'll be using something similar i may use either this or i may use something like doctivec um, i'm still tinkering with the code there but that's going to be coming out in a couple of weeks as well so that's pretty exciting but anyways like i said in the next video stay tuned what we're going to be doing is we are going to be taking this entire package and we're going to be putting it into a docker image and then running this in a container and i'll show you how to do that next time but Guys, if you like this, please consider liking and subscribing, and I will talk to you next time. Thanks very much.